Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Wings LTD from the Resistance Community bringing you the second video of the Battlefield 4 settings editor where we actually explain the graphical settings. Now I'm going to actually try to make this video go pretty fast for everyone so we don't have to worry about anything. Basically, once you go to the graphics tab you have your brightness, field of view, HUD scale, motion blur amount, etc, etc. Your brightness I recommend keeping at 100% and field of view really depends upon how you like to play. Some players have it at 85, some players have it between 70 and 80, and other players have it between 60 and 70. There's many different reasons why you would choose a lower or higher field of view than the default, which I will try to explain here as quick as possible. Basically in Battlefield 3, it had it didn't even matter what you had your uh, field of view set to, the maximum was of course 90, but whenever you scope down on a weapon, it automatically changed your field of view to 70. This is not the case in Battlefield 4, as it has a static style field of view, much as Quake, therefore you need to be very careful when choosing the appropriate field of view for yourself personally. Whenever I use Recon, I use between a 60 to 65 field of view, which allows me to have a smaller range. There we go. 65 allows me to have a smaller range that I will see left and right, but it makes targets appear to have a larger headshot range uh, than normal. Most players, however, are not playing recon, and they should use between a 70 to a 75 field of view. As you can see, this gives you a much larger horizontal field of view, 108 and 102 respectively, while still allowing to have the best, most accurate sizing of targets for your weapons. So if you want to be a little cut above the rest, set it to 75. It allows you to see more left and right than those players that start off at a default value of 60, as you can see the difference being 91 there, while still allowing you to have higher accuracy. If you adjust all the way to 120, you may have a large horizontal field of view, but it can also incur motion sickness. Therefore, I do not recommend setting this value higher than 90, which gives you a 121 horizontal field of view. Even at 90, it will make headshots extraordinarily hard for you to achieve, but it will give you the advantage of being able to see both to the left and right of yourself when you're moving on the map a lot farther. But for competitive play on the 16v16, etc., etc., 75 would be most optimal. HUD scale, you can mess with that if you want, though I recommend turning your motion blur to 0%. This allows you to see people that are moving while you're running down a field or you are inside of a vehicle at 100% clarity versus the entire terrain being blurred where you might miss an enemy. I enable weapon blurring, which makes your weapon, of course, blurred out while you are looking down iron sights or a scope. This allows you to focus on the target that you are currently aiming at without having to worry about how sharp your gun looks, which can at times be distracting. Colorblind support is for people that have colorblindness. I would recommend actually changing this in game so you can see the differences between your squad uh, colors, team colors, and enemy colors, if you so need. For display settings, I prefer windowed mode to begin with, and what that allows me to do is actually start the game in windowed mode and hit Alt-Enter to bring it back to full screen, which allows, of course, for me to have higher uh, frames per second. Whenever I'm recording the game or streaming, I actually change my resolution and height to uh, 720, and so that would be 1280 by 720, but I have found optimal settings that allow you to play at 1920 by 1080 while still having 60 frames per second within any situation, no matter if you have a horrible computer or an amazing one. Uh, for instance, I have an old Asus laptop that a friend is, well, my friend has an old Asus laptop that he is using, and he gets 60 frames per second on it as well with a integrated graphics card, and that is due to the changing of settings. Now, we will make sure that you do not have vertical sync check mark because you don't need it and also the resolution scale 100 percent results in very fast performance in my opinion and below it even faster but that uh, has to do with your internal rendering resolution if you keep it 100 percent i'll be rendering at 1920 by 1080 at 200 percent i'll be uh, doing it at of course 200 percent of the initial value there which allows higher quality of the game but also will cost you performance for my overall graphics quality, I set this to custom. I put 
texture quality to medium, texture filtering to medium, mainly because that increases the sharpness of detail, of course, as you can see here at far distances, and also allows me to use a medium amount of my actual uh, graphics card memory. You can set these settings mainly to whatever you want, but if you're going to have, if you're wanting to have a high FPS, the way for you to keep the game looking decent while also maintaining 60 frames per second includes these settings here. Of course, with a more powerful rig, you can bump these settings up higher and have no problems whatsoever. But for competitive play, this is also what I recommend. It knocks out the decoration quality there, so you can see people behind bushes a lot easier. It also messes with the uh, mesh and terrain quality. Keeping it at medium gives you a nice draw distance for objects and also keeps them in a good detail with your uh, depth perception. Post-processing and effects I turn off, those are, of course, CPU intensive right there. And effects quality difference between low and ultra, I have still yet to see one. Therefore, setting it on low is really not going to make it look that much worse. Lighting quality I put on low, even though sharper shadows, more dynamic shadows can help make more for a, a beautiful game. It also helps distract you from your objective, which is destroying enemies and capturing points. Now, depending on, of course, what game mode you're playing. Let's quickly go through the sounds. You can select whatever sounds you want. I normally keep this at headphones. I do turn on surround sound, and I set a master volume for it fairly low, mainly because I have TeamSpeak and other applications running, or whenever I'm streaming, 25% provides a staple balance between my voice, my squad mates' voices, the other people in TeamSpeak, etc., etc. If you're doing what I'm doing and playing on TeamSpeak or another VOIP program where you are normally squatted up with your friends, you don't need to have VOIP in-game unless there is a commander that is not on your team or you enjoy hearing other people speak. I, however, do not. It distracts me from the game. Therefore, I disable it. It eliminates a lot of the rage that can come in through everything. Under controls, we can take a look here, and I do check the raw mouse input and make sure that my mouse acceleration is disabled. Therefore, when I'm moving my mouse here, it doesn't matter how fast or slow I move it, it's moving at a steady pace, which allows for greater accuracy. I do have my mouse sensitivity set at 2%, or sometimes I will bump it up to a maximum of 8% in-game, depending upon what weapon I am using. A lower sensitivity may make you feel like you're moving more sluggish until you get used to it, but also allows you to have greater stability whenever you're aiming, and therefore higher accuracy, which also translates into more kills. I don't recommend changing the key bindings right now until a lot of fixes have happened for Battlefield 4 that allow you to set custom key bindings for your gadgets that do not crash and bug out the game, though you can change all the key bindings in this program, most of them without any sort of issue whatsoever. Now we're on to the most important settings for your graphics, which are the console settings. In the basic commands, we have everything that has to do with drawing your HUD. If you disable this, it takes your HUD away. Keep it enabled. Your screenshot format here, I keep that as PNG, which is perfectly fine. And here are the settings that control literally the difference between having a constant 60 frames per second or up to 60 frames per second and running at 30 frames, especially when streaming. I disable trip or buffering mainly because I won't have video tearing if I set this maximum FPS value here to 60. Anything above 60, while it may seem good, it's actually pretty bad for your computer. It raises the heat of your video card, the heat of your processor, etc., etc. It mainly degrades your hardware a lot quicker, going over 60 frames per second, and does not provide any value, in my opinion, whatsoever. Therefore, setting it to 60 keeps it to where it will only hit a maximum of 60, and disabling the tripper buffering will help save you some video memory, and... These settings right here are the ones that really determine your performance boost. Disabling all of DirectX 11 and its CS path, while it does make it to where you cannot run your uh, texture quality, texture filtering, mesh quality on Ultra, those are DirectX 11 settings, higher Ultra, excuse me, those are DirectX 11 settings only, it allows you to have just a huge performance boost in game. I could set this maximum FPS to whatever I wanted to right now, even while I'm streaming, and I'm still going to get over 100 frames per second on this old computer just because I have DirectX disabled. And the other important setting to change is, of course, the shadow map resolution. The lowest value is at 1. You start with a default of 1024, but by reducing it to 1, it makes the shadow quality go down a lot, but it takes just loads and loads of processing stress off your computer and off of your graphics card. 
So setting it to one is optimal for competitive play. It may make your shadows look terrible, but at the same time, you can still see the shadows accurately and you will have your frames per second that you are desiring. The other commands to go through are the draw FPS. That of course gives you the FPS counter on the top right screen and the screen information overlay. As you can see here with these tool tips, they let you know what this, the draw screen information lets you know your resolution, your refresh rate, V-Sync, viewport, display size, all of that fun information while you are configuring everything, if you are configuring it through the console and game. And your draw performance overlay, of course, shows your CPU and GPU usage over time down here. Um, the fixes, you can take a look and see what the fixes are, how they work, though I still say that the key binding fixes don't really uh, work out right now with your changing of your key bindings for your gadgets. So always, of course, be wary of that while you're setting your custom configs. All in all, after you have this done, we'll bring up our origin here. And this only applies if you are using the syncing clouds, syncing your uh, settings to the cloud to use on multiple computers. If you're only going to ever play Battlefield on one computer, you can, of course, um, disable that. I'm not sure how to disable it, honestly. Origin, um, application settings. Let's take uh, look here. General settings, maybe. Uh, yes, the cloud storage. You can disable this if you only ever use one computer, and that'll eliminate this pop-up of things that are uh, coming up here. Or you can keep it enabled. If you have this cloud storage enabled, whenever you actually go to play the game and you've used the settings editor, let's go ahead and try to uh, load into a server. Since I have messed with stuff, this pop-up should happen. I just joined on a random server here. It's reserving the slot now. Now it says your saves are not synced. Oh, dear Lord. What you need to do is click on OK and then use your local data, which is the data that you have modified with the Battlefield 4 settings editor. And then it will, of course, allow you to launch your game, which uh, you can see here. It's joining the server, logging in now. Battlefield 4 is popping up over here in windowed mode. But a bing but a boom and i am recording this at of course super high definition quality i'm not 100 percent sure what my fps will be like while i'm recording at 1920 by 1080 but we of course can take a look at this for just a few moments while this happens so with my current settings i am recording at obs with a 10,000 uh, kb a second quality there so it's using a ton of processing power and everything else while i'm loading in of course it's always common to see um, loading in at you know between 30 and 40 frames per second you're gonna see that fluctuate while it, it does load up all of the objects and everything and now at the menu I'm doing this offline recording at 1920 by 1080 with the highest audio and everything else I'll swap this into Battlefield 4 for you uh, let's full screen it as you can see here it fluctuates whenever you go back into full screen from windowed mode and I am sitting at 60 frames per second. Now, as we, uh, we move around, you're going to notice my frames will drop to 36 as I'm recording at 1920 by 1080. However, if I am not recording, I will have a constant 60 frames per second, and there will be uh, nothing to really worry about. Whenever I'm streaming, of course, I use a smaller resolution that's not 1920 by 1080. But as you can see here, doing uh, recording on the highest quality offline, 1920 by 1080, I still maintain... 25, 26, 30 FPS, depending upon the situation, which is still not really playable in my opinion, but it's it's decent. But this just shows you here under the options how everything looks. I've actually changed my mouse sensitivity to 14% um, in-game right now, and everything else really populates. The only other issue we have with the settings editor, it does not update with your mouse sensitivity. So if you change it in-game, it won't display the same on the settings editor. That's one thing you need to make sure that you remember. Um, and now you can see everything else that I have here. Uh, quickly going over the colorblind settings. If I change it here to Dinotopia, um, this is what the changes are for the squad colors. Trinotopia, Pronotopia, and Normal. So if you are colorblind, of course, select your correct colorblindness. Or if you like your icons to look different, you can set it up whichever way you want. I, of course, like everything to run just normally. And that is pretty much all she wrote for that. So now you know the um, more advanced options here for, for the Battlefield 4 settings editor, exactly what they do with the CPU load, GPU load, 
and hopefully you can use this to help make a basis for you. And if you also want to use multiple profiles, after you have done everything that you want to in the settings tab, come over here to profile, click on the profile you want to save it to, click on overwrite, okay, and you can change settings. If you weren't happy with your settings, you can always click on a profile and then load it. But always make sure that you click on your profile and then click on overwrite profile so the settings that you have made actually save to a profile. But other than that, that's about all she wrote for this. This has been Wings LTD with Resistance. We'll see you next time.